morning everyone as we come together to share in morning prayer for the Easter season and today is Thursday the 7th of May. I have to remind myself of the day and date every morning. And so we continue in our readings today from the book of Exodus and from the book of Luke and we begin with our opening responses. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God, of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made, and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. So we come to our Easter anthems from 1 Corinthians and from the Book of Romans. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We keep a few moments of silence. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So our psalm today is Psalm 118, and the refrain is, I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord proclaim his mercy endures forever. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. In my constraint I call to the Lord. The Lord answered and set me free. The Lord is at my side, I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? With the Lord at my side as my saviour, I shall see the downfall of my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in the flesh. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. All the nations encompass me, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They hemmed me in, they hemmed me in on every side, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They swarmed about me like bees, they blazed like fire among thorns, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. Surely I was thrust to the brink, but the Lord came to my help. 
I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raises up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not given me over to death. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords, right to the horns of the altar. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures for ever. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. Saving God, open the gates of righteousness, that your pilgrim people may enter and be built into a living temple on the cornerstone of our salvation, Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And so our written, first reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 34. And you'll remember the tablets of stone that uh, Moses brought down from the mountain were broken. And so this is the kind of reparation for that, really. The Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the former ones. And I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets, which you broke. Be ready in the morning and come up in the mount morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you and do not let anyone be seen throughout all the mountain and do not let flocks or herds graze in front of that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the former ones and he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity, and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the guilty, but visiting the iniquity of the parents upon the children, and the children's children, and the third and fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. He said, If now I have found favour in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff necked people, Pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. He said, I hereby make a covenant. Before all the people I will perform marvels, such as have not been performed in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you live shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. The Lord said to Moses, Write these words in accordance with these words. 
I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. He was there with the Lord for forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Moses came down from Mount Sinai as he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand. Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him and Moses spoke with them. Afterwards all the Israelites came near and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> and our second reading from Luke's Gospel. <clears throat> we heard yesterday of the baptism of Jesus by John. Today we hear of his uh, journey into the wilderness. Luke chapter 4 and beginning at verse 1. <clears throat> Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and play, placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? So we come to the song of Zechariah, the Benedictus. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. 
and you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for this new day and for all that will be in it for us. We pray, Lord, that we might rejoice in the happiness of the day and we might embrace the sadness of the day. Lord, we thank you for all the goodness that we see around us, for the kindness that we have experienced in people. We pray and continue to pray for gentleness among us, Lord, and for wisdom. We pray for a regard for one another. And we pray, Lord, particularly over this next few days as the government seeks to announce changes in the way that we are. We pray that you would grant them wisdom. We pray that you would help everyone to work together for the common good. We pray, Lord, that we would all begin to regard freedom as a privilege. And as we begin to take steps ourselves and as we begin to move into perhaps a gentler way of being, that Lord, we would learn the lessons of this last few weeks and that we would take them to heart and that they would become a part of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> in our cycle of prayer today, we pray for the people of Rephan, for those who are part of the community of Rephan, for those who are part of the community of the church. We thank you for each one. We give you thanks, Lord, for the organisations that operate from Reefham. We thank you for the parish council. We thank you for the post office and for the school. We pray for organisations that happen within the village. We pray for the village pub, which was just reopening again before um, the lockdown occurred. So, Lord, we pray for all local business and pray that they might flourish at this time. We pray for our children who are in school and who are out of school. Lord, may they know your blessing this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those who are bereaved at this time in the most difficult circumstances. We pray that each one might know your peace this day. That each one may know your healing and your strength and your comfort. And we pray, Lord, for those who are going into work today for 
those who know that it will be a tough day. We pray, Lord, particularly today for our prison officers, for our probation staff, for those who are resident in prison. Lord, we know very little of what is happening in our prisons at this time. But we pray for your safe keeping for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue, Lord, to give thanks for all our key workers. We give you thanks for all who work in our NHS and in our care homes those who are caring for people in the community, for our hospices, and we pray for all who are working with those who are vulnerable in any way. Lord, we pray for your mercy upon all people. We pray for peace, we pray for the strength to work another day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things that which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. So thank you for joining me this morning uh, in morning prayer. It's lovely that we can share together in this way. I hope you all have as good a day as it's possible to have today. Enjoy the warmth in the air and the sunshine. And uh, may God bless you and may God be your peace today. Lots of love to everyone. Uh, I'll be back here at 7 o'clock this evening for Compline if you want to join in with that too. God bless. Bye.